Hey guys, Michael here. In this screencast, I'm just going to show you my way of editing YouTube videos and what I think you should definitely include in them. So the first thing I'm going to show you is why I cut something. Now generally, I cut things that are irrelevant, stuff that maybe I stumble through something and I just say, alright, I'm going to redo it, and I redo that section. But for the most part, I run through my videos in one take. So what I'm usually cutting out is actually just some time to make it to the YouTube limit of 10 minutes. As you can see, this last video clip was 10.16, but I edited it down to 9.10. Now, of course, I could have just chopped off 16 seconds, but if I'm going to go through all that, I like to make it a little bit more clean. So let's let's look up here. There was a cut here, and I'm going to show you why I did that. Did some of their products. So we'll start off with some of the... So that's what it was, and this is what the original was. Their products. Now, I say unexpected, but this is becoming more of something Apple's doing. Instead of holding massive press conferences with... See, I started to go on a little bit of a ramble about Apple press conferences, and it really wasn't related to the product refresh that I wanted to talk about. So I cut that out. Now, you also see up here we have some media. Why do I put media in here? Well, really, I think media adds a lot to what you're talking about, particularly in a video just like this where I'm just sitting down and giving you the information verbally. I think it's really important to have some additional pieces of media for your viewers to enjoy. And with iMovie, you have a lot of choices on that. So let's say I wanted to go to my desktop, and I wanted to add this little picture that I made with Photoshop m Mobile. I could just drag and click, drag it onto here, and now I can either replace it, insert it, cut away, do a picture and picture or a green screen. So cut away is what, I sh is what I'll show you uh, in, in the other ones here, but picture and picture is also an option. So here's a cutaway. It just cuts out your entire frame, and a picture and picture just puts you up there. And you have some choices too. You can select how big you want it. You also have some choices here, so you can do some Ken Burns movement if you wanted to. You can crop it or fit the whole thing. Let's say you just wanted to crop it and just put that part in. You could do it. And you also have some choices with clip adjustments. You can change how long you want it to be there. You can also change the effect. So right now it's not dissolving in or out, but now once we start it here, it'll fade in, as you can see. And if you don't like it, you can just take it out with a, just click on it and press delete. It's really pretty simple to do anything in iMovie. For instance, if you, want, if you didn't know how to cut a part out, and we just talked about cutting, you can just select what you want, go down to Edit Split Clip, and then just press the delete button really graphically, really simple. It took two seconds. And if you knew the, know the keyboard shortcuts, it's really easy. And there you go, it's cut out. And if you're like, oh, actually, I kind of want that, just Command Z, it's back. Command Z, it's reattached. It's really pretty simple. You can also do the same thing with movie files if you wanted to demo something in the background. Or music is similar. You just click over here to music. You can browse through your different media libraries and drag it on really very easy and simple to do. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about are the two T's and I think the two T's are really the most important part of your videos. Titles and transitions. Your video, if you're not going to do anything else, if you're not going to cut out stuff for time, if you're not going to cut out stuff that doesn't make sense, if you're not going to add some media, some multimedia elements to your videos, I really think adding the two T's will greatly improve the content and professionalism of your video. So I'll show you just the start of my video and you can see that. So that's how it looks with your transition. Now how would it start without it? I'll show you just by deleting it. Just click and delete. It's definitely not as good or professional. But I think just spending the five seconds or two seconds just to click over here to your transitions and to drag in, in this case, a mosaic, it's definitely worth spending that time just to add a little bit more professionalism to the content. Now, when you're doing a transition to introduce your video, you can pretty much go whatever route you want. But some of these more fancy transitions, I think, really work better when you have clips on each side, particularly swap, so you can you know, easily graphically see a transition between two clips. 
Now, if you want it to be a little bit less obvious, you could also do a cross zoom. That's what I like to do when I'm doing between two clips, and I think that's demonstrated right here. Just so it, just so, for this reason, I didn't want people to realize that there was something I cut out because it didn't make sense. So just to add that little transition, it made it a little bit less obvious, even though, of course, you can still see it, but when you're watching, you're not gonna think, hey, why did he just do that? Whereas with something like this, you would definitely realize. So that's just something to keep in mind. So I have a cross dissolve, a cross zoom over there, and that's pretty much it. And just keep in mind that between two clips, you don't always have to have a, a transition. Sometimes if you just want to do, uh, you just want to cut something out really quick, sometimes it would make sense not to have a transition, but it all depends on the clips and what you want. Now, I do change up the transitions I use, but one thing that stays constant and is pretty much essential in all of my videos is this transition. Fade to black. I think it's just necessary to improve the video and when I don't see transitions on videos it kind of makes me disappointed because it'll the video will end and you'll still see like a faded out picture of whatever the last frame was and then you'll see like related videos on overlaid on top but I think it's just better just to you know spend the extra two seconds and add that fade to black just to make it look a little bit more clean it's definitely something that I always add to my videos and if you're gonna go ahead and edit this maybe just to mash clips together why not spend you know the extra 30 seconds just to add one or two transitions to your videos and it'll just make your your brand and your YouTube channel a little bit more appealing and the last thing is a tra is a title the second part of the two T's now you can put titles throughout your videos just to highlight what you're talking about and you iMovie really has a lot of powerful titles that you could use. Paper, gradient white, which is what I'm demonstrating up here, gradient black, torn edges, far, far away. And some of these are titles, and they also have scrolling credits, so if you're adding a movie, you can do that. They have different, you know, cooler effects, depending on what you what you want to do. And if you want to emphasize something, you can use some of these cooler trans, uh, titles, and it will, will look pretty nice. But what I like to start every all of my videos off with, and this is another one of those constants I'm telling I was telling you about, is just a title pay, uh, just a title showing what my video is going to be about. So in this case, I said Apple product refresh because that's what this video is about. It can change between maybe X video review or Y walkthrough. It doesn't matter what it is. Just keep it short. Keep it simple. And it doesn't always have to correspond to the YouTube title you put because sometimes that YouTube title that you add is to increase your search rank. So sometimes it doesn't have to match, but for the most part, I have mine matching. And then just so people know who I am, I say by Michael Sherlock. You could put down here anything you wanted, really. You could put down your website, mine's michaelsherlock.com, or your YouTube channel, mine's youtube.com slash the revived one. You could put anything down there. But I also like to add, besides my name, so people can search me if they want to, but also the date that it was edited. Not necessarily the date it was recorded, because sometimes I record videos in a bunch, and then I don't edit them for a while. And just so that it doesn't change, sometimes I do this, sometimes I do that, just for my records and for the people watching, I always do it the time it's edited. Now again, sometimes you'll see in a video, hey, it's edited, it has this date, but this date was five days ago. You put the wrong date in, Michael. No, I didn't. This is just to give me a reminder when it was uploaded, just in case, you know, maybe something gets lost in the archives. You know, I'll remember, or I'll visually see, hey, this was recorded two weeks ago. I probably should upload this before it becomes older content and people will be less interested in it. So it's, also, it's for the viewers, but it's some of these things is for yourself as well. That is how I edit my YouTube videos. So again, I'm Michael Sherlock. Thanks for watching and have a good day.